The Sausage Squad distributing clickbait images of uh, Harry and Meghan. A special tribute to Prince Philip and Sophie and Edward shining in the name of the king. This and more on tonight's show. Hello and welcome back my royal rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the royal rogue. And tonight I want to announce that my massive compilation of 1000 plus AI generated images of Megan will be released in coffee table format. Hand soon extra heavy matte pages featuring the best digital memes for your guests. Amusement. And this special edition will have a full chapter dedicated to the color beige with such hits as Megan's oversized overcoat as big as her ego, Harry flying over the Atlantic to ask for money, the Harkles' very own pool of toxicity, and the legendary fashion statement on that Vogue cover, the pants bra. And, of course, this is just a joke, but what if I make this a reality? Would you be up for it? And I don't know if you already watched it, but my interview with Lady C was hands down one of my greatest experiences as the Royal Rogue. I, I must say, I was as nervous as you can imagine, but Lady C helped me just do this so smooth that at no point I felt like an interview, but it was more like a conversation. And that is part of the feedback I had. And I'm grateful that you have tuned in to watch. And if you haven't, you can find it front and center on my channel's YouTube page. But pictures that will not be featured in my book are the ones that the Sausage Squad have been releasing quietly as pure nostalgia bait. Harry and Meghan showing up to their wedding rehearsal in matching outfits. Whoa. They are wearing a white shirt and a white blouse with sunglasses. Does that count as matching outfits? And why dress in such an oppressive color? Even the seats of the car are white. How dare you? And the other question that I have is, where, where do they get these pictures? Because I'm sure I have never seen them before. For one instant, I wonder if they could have used AI to make them. But no, they, these people who don't have the skill to do this kind of work. Because Harry looks more and less happy. But again, this was before the wedding, right? So he might have been unaware of what was coming. And what Megan didn't see coming was hitting the pause button on her groundbreaking initiative, the American Riviera Orchard. Yeah, that's right. The, the world will have to wait a tad longer for whatever marvels lie within her lifestyle brand treasure chest. And the reason... A royal rendezvous in London town with hobby Prince Harry and the Tots, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet to mingle with the family here that she's been seen less often than a solar eclipse. This thrilling trips back to the UK is set to be Meghan's grand return since bidding adieu at Queen Elizabeth II's funeral in 2022. One can only imagine the jubilation or consternation rippling to the royal corridors at the news of her impending visit, and royal gossip connoisseurs have suggested that Meghan's venture into the world of Instagram entrepreneurship with Arrow was perhaps a hasty move, because it seems that Meghan, in a rare moment of reflection, decided not to flood the market with her undoubtedly indispensable products, ranging from essential pet food to must-have cooking utensils, that she appeared to be capitalizing on her Duchess Dazzle while the rest of the royals weather a storm of health scare. But indeed, Meghan unveiled her lifestyle brand with all the pomp and circumstances of a new Instagram account on March 15. Yet he's kept the curious public in suspense, revealing merry a detail about the goods soon to be deemed essential to our drab, non orchard lives. But the plot thickened when Catherine shared her cancer diagnosis, casting Megan's launch in the unfortunate light of bad timing. A coincidence as regrettable as wearing white to a wedding that's not your own. Meanwhile, trademark sleuths have unearthed Megan's ambitions to peddle everything from eyeliner to egg whisks under the sausage seal of approval. 
And however, her digital storefront remained shuttered on the expected launch date of April 7, stirring rumors and disappointment alike. Classic. In a twist worthy of a daytime drama, whispers from the palace hint at Harry's journey to plant roots in British soil once more, though not too deeply. The UK might become a quaint holiday spot for the Sausage Squad, a second home where they can pop in for tea and sympathy as the fancy takes them. So, as we await the next installment of Meghan Does Britain, one can only ponder. Will the American Riviera or George bloom in the shadow of Buckingham, or will it wither on the vine? Meanwhile, in a recent conversation, Kelly and Sharon Osbourne share their candid thoughts on the media frenzy surrounding Catherine and her cancer diagnosis announcement. The pair expressed their disgust at the public and media's intrusive behavior, compelling Kate to reveal her diagnosis publicly amidst rampant conspiracy theories and speculation. And Kelly highlighted how expectations for the princess to return to public duties by Easter were met with a lack of dignity and respect from the media, not only in Britain, but globally. This despite historical precedents of warmer relations between royals and the press, like with Princess Diana. The Osbournes criticized the blurring lines between celebrities and royals, emphasizing the significant differences in their roles and the unique pressures faced by members of the royal family. And Sharon lamented the hard work and public service of the royals, often overlooked by those unfamiliar with the complexities of the roles. She rebuked the trivialization of their duties and the superficial coverage focused on appearances rather than their contributions to the country. And discussing cultural differences, Kelly and Sharon debated the perception of royal support in England versus America. And they touched on the broader implications of uh, conservatism and liberalism in their attitudes towards the monarchy. And they praised the British royal family's ability to maintain that tradition and grandeur, distinguishing them from other monarchies. Yet they noted how the media's obsession with uh, the British royals often overshadows the privacy and dignity of other royal figures, like the princes of Monaco that I mentioned in these days. And the conversation took a more personal turn as they discussed breaches of privacy, including illegal attempts to access Kate's hospital records and the subsequent legal actions. They condemned the vile conspiracy theories circulating about Kate and emphasizing her commendable integration into royal duties and her flawless public record. And highlighting Catherine's role as a mother and the sensitivity required in discussing her diagnosis with her children, Kelly and Sharon reflected on their own experiences dealing with uh, a cancer diagnosis. They criticized the sensationalism surrounding the announcement of Kate's condition, including the, the stateful countdown to the official statement and the scrutiny of her social media posts. And finally, the Osborne's call for respect and privacy for Catherine, praising her contributions and urging the public to consider the human aspect behind the headlines. They underscore the importance of empathy and support for those in the public eye, especially during personal trials. And speaking of William and Catherine, they have been navigating the treacherous waters of social media like seasoned sailors facing down a tempest. Back in the day, Lady Diana was the darling of the press, practically the girl next door if you're next door happened to be a palace. She was so chummy with the paparazzi camp outside her flat, one might have mistaken them for a quirky extension of her social circle. And fast forward, and her initial honeymoon phase with the media morphed into a complicated relationship status that not even Facebook could encapsulate. But William and Catherine were determined not to let their story be penned by the trolls lurking in the shadowy depths of the internet. They have mastered the royal art of keeping calm and carrying on, and while dodging the digital slings and arrows that come with their blue-blooded territory, 
But we need to picture Catherine amidst all this, decided to go public with her cancer diagnosis in a move that was both brave and a bit of a mic drop. So she said, here's my truth, now let's see you turn that into clickbait. And William, he's been the rock, the steadfast prince whose public calm belies any storm that might be raging behind palace doors. And the Wilses, in essence, have become the masters of their narrative, refusing to be cast as characters in the internet's version of Game of Thrones. They have shown that while they may not control the narrative's direction, they sure can sail their ship with dignity and grace. And in the end, William and Catherine have shown that they are not just any royal couple. They are a bit like that cool aunt and uncle who know how to shut down a family dinner debate with a single witty remark. They have navigated their trials with blend of public poise and private resilience, proving that no matter the challenge, they will always keep calm and carry on. It's in that spirit that I wanted to share with you this image of Prince Philip with Prince George in the third anniversary of his passing. I picked this one because it not only represented family, but the passing of time in terms of tradition and the activities of outside, which are the ones who create true bonds between those generations. And it's also a cute picture. And I also liked this one picked by the International Award. Today, we remember our founder, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, who passed away three years ago. His vision paved the way for millions of young people to thrive. His legacy continues to inspire us all. And I have to say that, uh, be patient with me, but I didn't know that in this same day, the king and the queen got married. Uh, yeah, life sometimes has odd coincidences, but congratulations to the royal couple. And it is also the 22nd anniversary of the queen's mother's funeral. But in a twist that sounds straight uh, out of a royal comedy, King Charles has been caught chuckling at the side of his own mug, gracing the fresh 5, 10, 20, and 50 pounds notes, freshly minted during his post-Easter break rendezvous at Buckingham Palace. It seems like the palace turned into a pop-up bank with Andrew Bailey and Sarah John playing the roles of head tellers, presenting the king with a folder full of his own face. This royal visage swap makes Charles only the second monarch to have his selfie slapped onto the nation's cash, following in the footsteps of her dear mom, Queen Elizabeth II, who started the trend back in the swinging 60s. A short flick share with the masses shows Charles quite gobsmacked, praising the nasty design and the James Bond-level security features meant to thwart any would-be forgers. And despite this monumental change, the royal household has kindly requested that the Queen's notes stick around, citing a wish to dodge both environmental and financial kerfuffles. So Charles' face will be sharing wallet space with his mom's in a bid to ease the notes into circulation starting June 5, with the promise of no environmental drama. As for the artwork, it's business as usual on the reverse side, featuring the usual suspects, Churchill, Austin, Turner, and Turing, with Charles giving a particular nod to the dapper designs on the 20 and 50 banknotes. The king where was donning his best blue suit, seeming in high spirits, perhaps buoyed by the news that his uh, treatment is going well, allowing him to plan more public appearances and even a grand Australian adventure next year. But here's the kicker. War on the street, or at least in the whispers of the wind, is that Harry might just catch one of these fresh bag notes and decide it's high time to hop on a plane back to the UK. And why, you ask? Well, to ensure he gets his princely hands on his fair share of past bank notes, of course. It's all about keeping it in the family, right? After all, who... Who wouldn't want a wallet full of notes with dear old dad's face on them? And on a day that promised more pomp and circumstance than a royal wedding playlist, Prince Edward and Sophie, Duchess of Instagram Ready Moments, or I mean Edinburgh, strutted their regal stuff at Buckingham Palace. At the occasion, a grand parade to tip their crowns to 
the 120th anniversary of the Entente Cordiale, because nothing says happy anniversary like a bit of military flair and French guards in London. The Duke and Duchess were doled up to the nines, with Edward cutting a dash in a navy pinstripe suit that screamed, I've got this, while Sophie dazzled in a pastel blue dress topped with a camel wool coat that probably had its own Instagram account by the end of the day. This historic shindig saw the couple stepping in for King Charles, eyeballing troops and watching the changing of the guard. It is believed that Charles and Camilla were off in Balmoral, possibly binge-watching their favorite series. And Sophie was practically glowing during the parade, inspecting the guards with a beam that could rival the sun. And the Duchess's outfit choice for the day was nothing short of a sartorial triumph, proving once again that royal engagements are the ultimate fashion runway. And meanwhile, Edward, ever the dapper duke, was spotted in high spirits and... Wait a minute. I have seen that tie somewhere. Mm, for some reason, you're not gonna believe this, but before this coincidences happened, I had already chosen this tie to be the standard royal rogue tie. And it was thanks to Christian Freiber that I found out that this is the regimental tie of the British Army's Household Division Brigade of Guards, which might already symbolize a club. And since she's a military writer and fashionista, I'll take her word for it. And thanks to Jan Carson Taylor, we got this picture of Sophie at that event and reminds us a lot of another picture that we know very well. Also shared by Jan, Sophie walking in their footsteps, protecting their legacy. Just wonderful. But, Rogis, I would like to know what you think about this in the comments. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And remember, much love and bliss.